All right, just wanted to see if you guys were awake. We are halfway through startup number three from the Lion City and IA Lion, all the way from Singapore. Bio 3D, peace. Put your hands together for Fan Ming Wei, everybody. Thank you.
here's a short video showing some of the capabilities of our bioprinter. So you see we can do precise printing uh, at a micro scale level. And we can control multiple printing users together. That means that we can control multiple materials together in one session. Therefore, we can control individual printing movement. And for the sake of time, I only show you three things here, three printing things. But actually, in fact, we can increase it to limitless. Basically, just depend on the size constraint that you can put on the printer. Okay, I'll tell you about the market size. So, what is the market size? Actually, according to the medical market, for some experts, they say that the 3D printing for the medical market is actually, actually expected to grow to $1.9 billion by the year 2025. And of course, like I just said, the drug industry spends more than US $50 billion on just research and development for drugs only. That's for drugs. Remember, we haven't included in diagnostics, we either include in other kinds of cancer treatment or, or some other stuff, it's just for drugs. So obviously, there's a need to actually speed up whole thing, to reduce cost, so that we have a new medicines and stuff. So that it's expected that there's another at least 20 years of demand for such oil printing services and products. So the business model, we are actually uh, depending mostly on sale products, such as uh, the sales of the bio printers, the consumables, just like the laser printers, you sell the laser printer, you sell the toners, you know. Yeah. Uh, we are also selling customized human tissues, we plan to set up a database, a centralized database. In fact, I would guess also one of the worst first uh, 3D printed human tissue database. We will also sell services for people who don't wish to buy a printer. And of course, we will do our licensing model for our portfolio patent. A little bit about uh, our company. We are based and located in Singapore. Currently, we hold two patents and of course, more coming. And we have a variety of 60 members with different experiences in biology, engineering, everything and stuff. Alright, thank you so much. And that's my content. Hi, judges. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, okay, there's an alternative technology like the IPS shares and uh, what is the advantage of 3D printing bio printing? So your question is what is the advantage yeah. of 3D printing? Yeah, because of with, uh, for example, IPS sales technology and so on. So basically the question is what is the advantage of uh, 3D bio printing? Yeah. Okay, very simple. Actually, currently right now for all the drug testing in the medical field, right, there is no method to actually do 3D <coughs> tissue. There's only one method, but it's just simply throwing in a 3D mesh, you know, and then let the cells go into so on. So why is the requirement, why is the need actually for 3D printing? Because all our organs, our liver, our heart, our kidneys, they exist in 3D printing. Yeah. Yeah, they interact with each other. The liver interact with the, maybe the stomach, the stomach interact with the, the, you know, the intestines and stuff. So actually they exist, in, they exist in a 3D environment and they need to communicate each other. Right now, for decades or even for centuries, scientists, researchers and everyone have been working on 2D cells issues, meaning one layer, X and Y, 2D only. And it's not accurate. I mean, the cells, they grow in 3D. Go into it. So when you test all the, that's why there, there are all these testings, animal testing, cell testing. This is the reason. You don't test it on humans first because you are afraid of the toxicity and afraid that you might kill the person. Yeah. So they test it on animals first, make sure that you don't kill the animals before they move on to humans. So to basically to sum up, basically the advantage of uh, 3D bio printing is to produce three human tissues that actually, or even I'd say 99.99 percent, reflect the real condition in the human body. Main advantage. Okay. And uh, so now, how long does it take for you guys to proceed to a clinical trial? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. So, how long does it take you know, for you guys to proceed to a clinical trial? Clinical trials? Yeah. Okay, one thing that I need to mention right, is that we are not a research and development company. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, we are not in the business yeah. of printing a kidney or a liver, you know. We are in the business of providing solutions, yeah. products to researchers. Yeah. To carry on their research. Yeah. For example, researcher A or Institute A, they can yeah. be in the area of cancer diagnostics, yeah. and B can be in the area of diabetes. What we are doing is that we are enabling technology, we are enable them, we enable them to have a technology to produce something useful for their research. So eventually, when it comes to the clinical trials, it comes to the regulations, the FDA stuff, it, it all belongs to the, the role, to the responsibilities of the user. For example, the institute or the company, for example, JSK, Pfizer, might need something new. 
tax and payment issue. So it, it's actually the responsibility of that company to carry out the clinical trials and the, the FDA regulations and not us. We provide the machine, we provide the solutions. Right? Because if we're going to if we are going to go into R &D, uh, it takes enough 15 to 20 years for us to the matter of revenue. Um, yeah, I totally understand the market is big and uh, that we have a lot of pain point here, but I just want to ask a little bit more about your uh, company rather than the market. So, would you please uh, explain you know, how hard it is to copy you know, your 3 printer in time for you a manufacturer? Of course, you're going to have some patterns, but still. So your question is basically, how hard is it for other 3D companies to actually enter bioprinting field? True. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, a lot of people ask me this question before. So one thing to take note that is bio is still different from non-bio stuff. It's still different from physical stuff. Because when in biology, we are dealing with living things. We are dealing with the product of our nature. You know. So one thing to take note is that three, normal 3D printers, they don't have the resolution. Okay, 3D printers, we know that some of them they talk about 100 microns this kind of resolution, right? Actually, in terms of the exact precision, precision level, normal 3D printers, they do not have the position. Even if they have the position, they do not know how to actually print them out when they're still surviving. You know, I don't want to print out dead cells, right? Who wants a dead cell that doesn't grow in a growing condition? We need to print out living cells. And again, in the nature, just for humans, we have different types of cells. Even cancer alone, we have potentially even hundreds different kinds of cancer cells. Each cell type actually has their own condition to grow them. This is actually the job of the biology side. And they have to work with the engineers and the bioengineers to actually come out. So it's not easy actually just to simply you know, convert a normal 3D printer to a bioprinter. Because it involves a lot of other knowledge, a lot of uh, education background you know, for, in the biology side. Yep. Of course we have uh, some patents to protect our innovations. Um, this is a really cool technology. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, sorry. Um, so, I, one one thing that you showed me was like the size of the market. But in terms of you know market coverage, how much percentage of this is actually covered for for, for testing? For example, obviously, psychoactive drugs or, or psych, psychotic drugs, you really can't apply this and perform a, a, a marginal outcome. But like in terms of your clinical testing market, what percent does your uh, technology, uh, it, how, like how much does it apply to it? So your question is basically how... Yeah, so, so you, have a, you, you, have a, you have like a giant pie for clinical trials, right? Yes. But obviously there's a bunch of segments that are not applicable for your technology. Like uh, like uh, clinical trials for antidepressant drugs. That won't be applicable for you because it needs real human samples, right? Or, or, but what what pie, what, what percentage of that pie does, can your technology apply to? Okay. Okay, one thing to take note is that uh, all forms of human drugs require human testing. All forms. Be it psychotic drugs, antipsychotic drugs, be it anti-diabetes, uh, be it cancer drugs. Every form of human drugs on earth right now needs some form of animal and human testing. Yeah, yeah. So actually there's no such, uh, I believe there's no such thing like, you know, to enter how much which market. Yeah, okay, like, like, say, say, say you're, say you're uh, some antidepressant drug maker, right? For you to actually push out a reasonable conclusion of whether or not this drug or work, a drug works or not, um, you, you can't literally judge it on tissue, you have to judge it on the human condition, right? So, but you're still saying that even with those, it still needs 100% human tissue to actually run. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, one thing about bioprinting is that we are not going to eliminate yeah. human testing. Course, yeah. We are not going to eliminate animal testing. We reduce the reliance on these models to reduce costs, to speed up the time, to increase accuracy. Right now, our strategy is to educate first. To educate the researchers and the research institutes about bioprinting, how we can help the research, how we can help in the drug companies. So we have to complement their existing methods, which means their cell testing, animal testing, we have to complement their existing methods. So right now, at this stage, we are not going to completely replace their existing models. But what we're going to do is to show them that it actually works. So of course, we hope that eventually over the time, you know, eventually we can just simply test it on its 3D printed human tissues before moving on to real human clinical trials. So again, human, human clinical trials we cannot avoid. We are not going to infinite. Unfortunately, that's the truth. We have to use a real human clinical um, In terms of like your, your, your machine and your technology, 
Do you own 100% of the IP and the hardware and software backend systems? Okay, about the IP. Yeah. Right now, 3D printing is actually not new. Yeah. In fact, 3D printing technology, the patent has expired. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So obviously, when I'm using 3D printing technology, when something has expired, yeah. Yeah. but so it's something that's specialized towards you know precision. Uh, a precision uh, construction of, of human yes. cells, right? So that's proprietary. Right? Correct. That's for our patent. So for our patent, actually, we make use of a combination of hardware and software to do the precision. And again, for different cell types, we actually need to come up with different database, different so-called instruction sets for for different set of conditions, optimal conditions for the cells to grow. Actually, okay. so all these will be these will not be under patent, but will be under trade secret. Okay. Will be under proprietary information. Have you thought about also spinning out that IP into other precision fabrication industries? Yeah, definitely. When we when we applied for our patents, we did we strictly strictly bioprinting. Yeah. We found the patents as a general 3D printing technology, yeah. which can be applied to bioprinting. So eventually, the idea is that when in the future, when 3D printing advances in the state that when precision is required, they can actually license technology from us, and you know. Apply in their, for their applications. I mean, this 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 comment is basically dovetailing upon um, what what other people have said is that if the FDA regulations are become more stringent or over draconian, your industry will stagnate as of, as parallel to the, the the amount of regulation that's put upon it. So as a diversification of risk, I would think that you'd have also equal opportunity to go into different uh, industries that require this sort of precision. Definitely. Well, one thing to know is that uh, about the FDA regulation, uh, actually there's no FDA regulation for research use products. FDA only requires regulation for medical use products, meaning testing for your blood samples as well. For, for our case, we are avoiding the whole regulation process by declaring that we are actually research use products, which in fact we are. So we are selling to the researchers and the research institutes for research use. This is why I say eventually when it comes to the regulation, it's actually the customer's role. All right. So in this type of industry, how is the game won? You know, are there are you competing with say five or six other labs around the world, and they've got equally compelling technology, and then your whoever's got the best sales teams, you know, win or like well, what what are the levers which make you become the global leader in producing this machine, or even make you have like a monopoly over this industry in some way? You know, what, what are your what's your thesis? In that? Okay, currently on bioprinting right now, we only for us we only found two main competitors, one in Germany and one in the US. So uh, obviously they have the financial muscle, you know, they have all the resources to do what they want. So again, to answer a few parts of the question, uh, first thing is that uh, labs they are not our competitors, they are our customers. So instead of building one from scratch yourself, why not just buy one from us? You know, save your time. You know? Instead of trying to gather all the engineers and biologists and, and different expertise, experts together, just buy one from us. We have a ready-made product, we just sell you. Second thing is that for our business model, we are actually cust very customer-centric. Because different researchers, different research groups, they have different... Uh, so you're actually more like a, a, a producer of this machine and you make custom machines for custom customers. Something like <laughs> that. So it's not, you're, you don't have like model type A, the Apple IIe, and then like five guys buy it, and right. then the Apple IIe, and then yes, yes. Guys, you know. We don't make generic, a generic template model. Okay, all custom them. machines. All custom made for each individual research. Like I just said, different customers have different requirements. And there are only two other people, one in the US and one right. in Germany doing it. And you're two saying major ones. two major ones, and then they've got much more money than you. That's what you're saying. Definitely, they raise a lot of money. So, so how are you going to fight that? You're going to raise a lot of money and fight them. That's what you're going to do, is it? Or okay, the issue about these two companies right now is that they are very focused on printing cells, human tissues. They are not so focused on other type of things. But in fact, in the human body, actually, there are a lot of interactions between cells. Bacteria, you know we all have bacteria in our body, right? I see, so those two guys, they print only cells, but you print only bacteria, cells. food source, yeah, other, all kinds of That's kind of why we are highly customer centric, we highly customizable based on your requirement. Right. So this is where we're going to come in. So for this kind of game, right, how much, how much money, you, you raise like 100 million in your first round? Like what, how much? <laughs> uh, I can't disclose it right now, but if you're interested, we can always talk. I'm more, I'm more interested in what are your thoughts on how to win, right? So in a simple way, what I'm gathering from you is you're you're doing something that those other two guys can't do. You're being more customer centric than them, where they're trying to create products the one size fit all, yes. right? So you're the boutique custom maker, and then nobody else seems to be nearly where your standards are at right now and your abilities at. 
and you'll be raising some sum of money for you to scale up the speed of production so you can produce for more customers sooner. Okay. okay one point to know is that uh, for our case, because the uh, profit margin is quite high for any biotech products, the medical products, so we don't aim for mass volume. We aim just a small number of customers and we just customize for them. Uh, it's enough for us to break even for one year. Judges, any more questions? Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Maybe someday you can 3D bio print me a girlfriend. That's actually, that's a killer. I'm kidding, my girlfriend is in the audience. That was just a joke. That was only a joke. I'm just, I don't know.